Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's our last No 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 kit, uh, and I've had so much fun doing it. We've had 10 amazing chefs be a part of it. Uh, I was so happy to be able to help out as many farmers as we were able to, and to help out as many restaurants as we were able to. But this is the end of the road, guys. This is our last one. Uh, so I thought I'd go out with a bang and do something really yummy. Not that they all haven't been yummy, but like I would be saying, it's really yummy. Uh, I've got Rachel, my chef cuisine, filming right now, but she uh, is going to stay behind the camera because that's what she thinks is best. Um, so let's get into it. We're going to do uh, pan seared pork loin. Um, they're from Fox Heritage, and I know it says uh, pork chops, same thing. Uh, and we're going to sear those off. We're going to have it with roasted winter squash and apple compote and uh, red pepper, fried red pepper coulis. So that's what we're doing, you guys. So first what we're going to do is we're going to get our veg started. I've got a pan. I'm starting to get warm. And you guys will have butter included in your kit. We're going to put in not all the butter. I would say probably about uh, two-thirds of the butter that's in your kit. We're going to put in here. And we're just going to get it so it starts to brown a bit. So a warm pan, a hot pan, but not a like ripping hot pan. And then to that, we're going to add while that butter is melting, we're going to just add our, our onions into that brown butter and just let them start caramelizing. And you guys look in here, if you can look in with the camera, you can see all that brown on there. Those are the butter salads that have gotten all nice and dark brown in the pan, but what you don't want is you don't want it to be black. You just want that nice brown, brown butter. And we want to kind of put this in a bit before we add any of the squash so we can get some nice caramelization on those onions. Um, onions need to be above 350 degrees to start caramelizing. If you have too much stuff in your pan, then water is going to leach out and we'll make it to the hottest it can get is 212, the boiling point of water. So the idea is you cook the water out first. Once the water is cooked out, then it can start to caramelize. So just make sure you cook it out long enough you start to see caramelization. I know it's easy to kind of think it's caramelized because of the brown butter salads, but do you see how this is just kind of translucent? This is getting there, but it's not really caramelizing yet. So I'm just going to stir it for a couple of seconds. And when it starts to get there, we're going to bring over, we have, uh, we have butternut squash from Driftless, uh, and then we have uh, this one from, um, it's a sugar pie pumpkin as well. So uh, we're going to put in our two squashes. really coated in the butter. If you guys are doing the vegan version, just instead of the butter, we have oil included. So instead of that, uh, you can just use the oil for it. And now that we've got the caramelization on the onions, um, we don't really need to caramelize the butternut squash or the pumpkin. So now we can put in some salt and pepper and then more salt. A little more pepper. Exactly that ratio you guys want. <laughs> and we're going to cook a good majority of this in the pan. We got all that direct heat, but when we got winter squashes, they really want to cook for a longer period of time than just a short blast in the sauté pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this really going. Really nice heat, kind of get the uh, exterior temperature of the squashes up a good amount. And then, once we get these cooked off a majority of the way, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer them to another pan, a cold pan, and we're going to put that pan in the oven. Now, why do we want to put it on the cold pan? Because if I take this ripping hot pan and I put it in the oven, the bottom is going to be so hot that the bottom of my squash is going to be scorched. If I put it in a cold pan, the whole thing is heating up at the same time, and I get an even roast all the way throughout. So you don't have to have it be another saute pan. You can also do it with a, um, a sheet tray or a cookie sheet too. So you see we're starting to get the color is fading 
from a pale yellow, you can see the color is starting to darken just a little bit. So when you have that like kind of darker color happening, that's when you know you're getting to the point where you are set. So we're gonna turn the heat off, give it another little swirl. And oh my God, it smells so good. Rachel, yes, it smells good? Oh, it smells great. Right, so, so we transferred it to a cold pan. We're just gonna put this in our oven. And we're gonna set it and forget it. Um, and then we have this other pan here that we've been kind of heating up. We have a vegan version that is uh, with, uh, with tofu. Uh, and we have uh, uh, this version, which is with Fox Heritage Farms. Uh, lemon black pepper boneless pork chops is what it says on here. They're amazing. They've been marinating. We've been working with Dan. Amazing, beautiful pork chops. And our tofu that we're doing, we smoke in-house. So it's got this beautiful, wonderful smokiness to it. They both taste amazing with this setup. So, um, so again, with this one, what we're going to do, we're going to put a little bit of oil. It is not included in your kit, but just use any kind of oil, vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever you like. And we're going to put in just enough to kind of cover the bottom of the pan, okay? So just enough. We don't want too much. And we want to get our pan really nice and hot. And that is the most important thing when you're serving any protein, whether it's tofu or pork or scallops or fish, like anything you're cooking, when you're looking for it, you're looking for little wisps of smoke that come up off your pan. You want to get your oil almost to the smoking point um, if you want to get a really good sear. So you throw this away. While that is also, your pan is also heating up, you can take your apple compote, which is just apples, uh, brown sugar, fresh thyme, a uh, little bit of oil, and um, salt and pepper, and you can just put that in a saucepan on um, nice low heat. So you just want that to be warm, kind of like 10 degrees warmer than room temperature. We just want a nice warm uh, kind of apple over the top. Now, um, you can see we are just getting to the point where we're starting to see a little bit of a wisp of smoke. You want to be careful though, because the oil that's on the outside of the pan is going to start to smoke first. So we really want to have this part of the oil starting to smoke before we put anything in. So I can start to see a little smoke. It's hard to see on the camera, but Rachel can attest there's smoke coming yes. up from the oil. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these beautiful pork chops or the tofu you're doing. And we're just going to put them in. And it's really good when you guys are putting it in the pan. You want to start with it in the pan and lay away from you. So if there's oil that splashes, it splashes away from you uh, instead of all over yourself. So now I know that the number one thing you want to do is you want to go over to these pork chops every 30 seconds and you want to flip them up and look underneath them and see if, if they're all the way brown or not. Don't do it. What you want to do is you want to look right here on the side, right here at that line. When that line is caramelized and brown and about halfway up the pork chop, um, it is a nice white color, it's translucent, then you're ready to flip it, but don't peek ahead of time. Is that right, Rachel? Right, don't Rachel. do it. That's when you get one of these from the chef. <laughs> like in a nice way, like a nice, a friendly, <laughs> a friendly love chef. That's actually why Rachel's not on camera right now. It's because she has so many marks from the tongue. That's true. Well, it's not really true. Rachel's a great chef. <laughs> oh my God, it smells so good, Rachel. Mm. So you can see that the color is kind of coming up the side nicely now. So the color is coming up the side and you can see it's not caramelizing yet, but there is just a light brown color. So really, 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 don't touch it. Whatever you do, don't touch it. Um, I also, for all of you who've already purchased the Nom 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 kit before, thank you so much. Uh, we've been able to put about $70,000 back into our local farming community. It's been incredible and wonderful to have your support. We 100% couldn't have done that on our own. With COVID, so many farms were hit so hard um, by their 
lack of ability to sell to the wholesalers group, to the restaurants, and a lot of farms were really worried about what next year was going to look like. They'd already planted all their crops. They had no idea how they were going to make it through. And I won't say it was just us. There were so many restaurants and so many other groups that really helped, like the Dane County Farmers Market and REIT, that really helped to like make sure the farmers had some safety. There were some great grants um, for um, working with Second Harvest to get healthy vegetables out to people. But I'm so happy that when we talk to our farmers now, although it's been a rough year, there are so many less farmers that are terrified. It's more just like what we are as restaurateurs, just like really scared now. So it's not terrified anymore. It's more of like just really scared. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to say thank you. So now, if you guys look here, you guys see that little caramel, it's like brown coming up the side and half of it is white. That's when we know we're ready to flip. So, look at that. Beautiful. You guys see how gorgeous that is? Rachel, is that gorgeous? It's gorgeous. Rachel says it's gorgeous. You should believe her. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is, right when we flip it, we still wanna get some caramelization on this side, but, we don't need to go as long on this side because we've already cooked off a bunch of the moisture that was on top of the pork. So when we flip it over, we aren't having to warm it all to a certain temperature um, before it starts to caramelize. We've already kind of pre-warmed the pork a good amount, so it's gonna take less time for it to caramelize on this side. So we're still gonna finish this in the oven though, but what we're gonna do is, once we start to see even a little bit of crease up on the side, of it starting to change colors a little bit, just the tiniest little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rest of your butter that's in your stick, and we're gonna add it to our pork. And now here's the method, you guys ready? So we're gonna tilt the pan towards us like that, and we're gonna use the scoopy part of the spoon, and we're just gonna baste each one of them over the top. And if you guys got the tofu, um, if you have any like soy margarine in your fridge, this also works that way. So you can also just use oil and throw some fresh herbs in. We're basically just basting the oil over the top. And one of the things that's important is we wanna make sure that the butter salads are cooked out of the butter before we do the basting because we want this to help make the pork crispier. We don't want to make it so that it makes it soggy. So if the butter salads haven't been cooked out, instead of making this really crispy and delicious and amazing, um, it's just gonna make it soggy and gross. So just keep on keeping on, keep it over the heat, and you're just gonna keep on basting for a good minute or so. And I will tell you guys, this technique works amazing for literally any time you are cooking any protein, whether it's vegetarian or vegan or seafood or pork or steak, um, anything that you want to cook through a temperature. The other thing I'm doing is I'm basically taking the temperature and instead of just applying direct heat to the bottom of the pan, to the bottom of the pork, I'm taking that heat and I'm basting it and pushing it all over the entirety of the pork. Oh my God, it looks so good. Unfortunately, none of you guys are here to smell it or to taste it. So Rachel and I will be doing the brunt of the tasting later. Yes. So we will, we'll take one for the team. Definitely And we will, will eat these chops for you um, because we're good people, right? Yeah. I mean, I can't speak for Rachel. I'm good people. Rachel, are you good people? I'm decent. She's decent, that's good. Decent <laughs> is good. Better than a shitty human being. That's true. Most, most days. <laughs> we all have our shitty human being days, don't we? Okay, so once you've done good basting for them, they're not going to need long in the oven, but they are going to need a little bit of time in the oven. So we're going to take them out. We're going to put it in the oven. And then we're going to grab our squash that was in here. And if you have it on a sheet tray, you can just stir it around a little bit. But all we're going to do is we're going to give it a little toss. Oh, it smells so damn good. We're just gonna give it a toss, 
So we mix it all up in there. And when I close the oven, I can. Now I have a lot of people on some of these recipes have been like, how long do we need to cook it for? And what's the temp of the oven? And my answer is we do our best to put it in the instructions, but every oven is different. Every temperature on every oven is different. Whether it's convection or standard, all of those things take part in how long something cooks. The best way to tell if your pork chop is done is put your hand out like this. Here, we'll do the same. We have a little cup here. So put your hand out like this and push right in the fatty part of your hand. If you push here, that's rare. If you touch your second finger and thumb together and push, that's medium rare, medium, medium well, and well. So go ahead, everyone, try it. And you can feel as you move your fingers around the difference in the feel. Now, if I go in here, my pork chop, and I pull it out right now, and I press in the center of it, it feels about like this, right? Right with my middle finger, which means it's right about medium. I'm gonna not take this to well done. Please don't kill your pork chops. I'm not gonna take it to well done, but I want it at a medium, medium well. So I'm gonna put it in for maybe another two minutes, and we're gonna take our pork chop out, and then we're gonna let it rest, which is super important. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna stop this Facebook Live, we're gonna wait for the rest of the stuff to finish, and we'll come on back in about five, 10 minutes, and we'll show you the second part. So thank you guys so much.